So can you see great. my can... presentation very well? Yes, I can. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Wen Juan Song, working in University of Bath as a research associate. And uh, uh, today I would like to present my work done in University of Bath on helical bifellar SFCL, a superconducting fault cantilimeter for electric propulsion aircraft. And uh, before moving to the main contents, I would like to briefly introduce uh, my personal research expertise. Uh, so including electromagnetic analysis of superconductors, AC loss analysis in superconducting devices, numerical modeling for superconducting applications, and also design and uh, fabrication of superconducting transformers, as well as port cantilimeters. So during my PhD career, I was involved in one project of uh, developing uh, of large capacity superconducting transformers for uh, Chinese high-speed trains. And uh, so here you can see this photo shows the installation of the traction transformer. Actually, it should be between uh, these two wheels. And uh, this figure shows a typical structure for the traction, uh, for the traction transformers. And uh, my role in this project is mainly for the electromagnetic analysis and also AC loss calculation and the AC loss reduction for these 6.5 MVA traction transformers. And the research uh, outcomes already been published in the uh, peer reviewed journal in International Journal of Electrical Power and Energy System. And since May of 2019, I joined the superconductivity group in University of Bath, uh, started to work with Dr. Uh, Xiao Zepei. So at this moment, uh, in, this, in our applied superconductivity group, Dr. Xiao Zepei is uh, our group leader. And there is one postdoctoral research associate, myself, working on developing SFCLs for distributed electric per uh, proportion aircraft. And uh, there are another four PhD students. They are working uh, on solid state DC circuit breaker, hybrid DC circuit breaker, electric aircraft superconducting network fault analysis, as well as cryogenic power converter for superconducting network. These are some of the uh, demonstrator in our lab. So today I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about the main uh, fail, uh, fail parts they are project background, and uh, I will introduce the specifications for this resistive type helical bifellar coils. And uh, the third part is AC loss analysis. I will introduce uh, the AC loss test rig as well as the test results and the analysis, and also fault count limiting test rig and the results analysis. So the final part is conclusion. As we are, uh, as we aware that global warming and uh, climate change have uh, greatly influenced our normal life, and they are partially uh, impacted by the sustained increasing of air traffic. So, in order to reduce the emission, different organizations already set up their own goals. And uh, to achieve this zero emission goal, electric propulsion is an enabling uh, technology, and also it has a uh, superconducting technique, it has been foreseen to be a prom promising technology for this electric propulsion uh, aircraft system. So due to superconductor has uh, many advantages, for example, like the zero resistance in DC system and uh, uh, low, a low losses in AC system, which leads to the superconducting application with a high uh, efficiency. And the superconductor activate high current carrying capacity which lead to set compactness and also lightweight. This is very critical for electric aircraft as well. And besides, superconductors have high uh, magnetic loading, which enables the superconducting machines with high power density, I mean the uh, kilowatt per uh, kilogram. For electric aircraft, uh, is uh, I mean, electric aircraft will has require high reliability and the safety requirements in order to ensure a safe flight under any critical electrical loads, even during uh, fault conditions. So super 
uh, conducting SFCLs exhibit many advantages compared to the uh, traditional fault count limiters. For example, uh, it has the uh, automatic and uh, effective fault count limitation, and uh, it uh, achieves faster recovery after fault has been, cl uh, been cleared. And uh, uh, superconducting fault count limiter can uh, achieve low impedance and low loss during the normal operation. And also, uh, of course, the superconducting applications will demonstrate uh, lightweight and uh, compactness. So currently, we are working in one uh, project funded by the EPSRC to develop SFCLs for distributed electric propulsion aircraft. And uh, uh, in this project, we got uh, three partners, uh, Airbus, Oxford Instruments, and also University of Manchester. In this slide, it shows three typical uh, structures for the bifellar coil. Figure A is a pancake bifellar coil. It's the most commonly used structure because uh, it has a size compactness and a low inductance. Figure B shows the conventional solenoid bifellar coil, and the figure C shows the uh, a bridge type soli solenoid bifellar coil. In this coil, it's, uh, it's composed with one inner winding and one outer winding. They are wound by the same bobbin well in the opposite direction from the top to the bottom. As if, if we uh, observe them, this, compare these three structures, we will find at high, uh, at high voltage applications, the configuration A and B, especially the terminals of these two configurations will suffer from high voltage. The same as the turns close to the terminals. And uh, this, uh, how say this will uh, ask extra insulation task for the project. And uh, besides the uh, configuration A, it has, uh, has a, this configuration shows compactness structure well, it will be very difficult when the fault happens to dissipate the heat from the superconductor. And then it's more risky for the coil to be burned because of the uh, 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 how say massive amount of heat generated, uh, absorbed in the fault kind of limiter. So, uh, so therefore we will say this uh, solenoid bifellar coil is more favorable in, uh, in the how say in the uh, in terms of the uh, voltage. In this slide, uh, we can show there are two uh, two uh, how say bifellar coil. Actually, they are achieved by that uh, heli uh, the helical bifellar coil. So by uh, proper managing the connection of inner winding and the outer winding, we can achieve a parallel connected structure. So in this configuration, uh, we have a parallel connected inner winding and outer winding. Probably in the later stage, I will record a BCP. So P uh, stands for the parallel. And also if we uh, connect inner winding and uh, outer winding in a series connection, we can achieve another structure. Uh, we will call it BCS or series connected by fellow coil. Um, well, to demonstrate this structure, uh, these two structures, uh, we are mainly interested with the uh, current distribution. Uh, as we can see, in, when the uh, total current will flow from here, and then the current will be distributed freely between inner winding and the outer winding. Well, in the configuration B, the current was forced uh, to flow equally in these two windings. So in our research work, we, uh, we mainly ex uh, explored the effect of the current sharing on AC losses, which is a very critical parameter for any superconducting uh, AC applications. And also we, want, uh, we compared the fault current limiting behaviors between these two coils. Uh, this is a piece of wire we used to wind our bifellar coil. Uh, and uh, this table lists up the parameters of this single tape. And uh, uh, one thing I want to notice is that the critical current of the single tape at 77K cell field is around uh, 256 amps. And uh, this tape uh, is, uh, I'll say, uh, stainless steel reinforced superconductor. 
it has the magnetic substrate as well. Uh, this photo shows us the developed uh, uh, helical bipolar coil in our lab, and it has four terminals uh, of the from the inner winding and the outer winding. So by properly managing the connection of the terminals, we can achieve a parallel connected bipolar coil and also a series connected bipolar coil. So in the, uh, this table lists up some specifications, the size things for this coil. This slide shows the critical current test system. And as you can see, a DC power supply with 10 volt, 1000 amps was used to generate the current in our system. And a shunt resistor was used to measure the transport current. And this critical current measurement system can, can achieve automatic, uh, I'll say critical current measurement with, uh, based on the voltage threshold, based on uh, any current rising rate. So the, in this figure, it shows the critical current, uh, critical current results of the inner winding and the outer winding of the uh, series connected by fellow coil. And it shows the critical current for inner winding is uh, 252 amps, and uh, for the outer winding is around uh, 251 amps. So actually you will notice that the critical current hasn't been degraded uh, from the single tape, which shows this helical bipolar coil you can achieve a, ver a very good magnetic field cancellation effect. So this is a photo of this system in our lab. In this slide, uh, it shows the AC loss measurement system. So in this uh, schematic, actually, uh, this Rogovsky coil was used in the system uh, to register the phase of the transport current. And uh, the locking amplifier was used to measure the voltage component, which is in phase of the uh, transport current. And all of the measurements were carried out in the liquid nitrogen bus 77K. And uh, this photo shows our AC loss test system. This slide shows uh, mainly reports the AC loss test results of the single tape and uh, uh, compared with the uh, Norris strip model and the Norris ellipse model. Uh, as we as observed in this figure, we can see the AC loss measured under uh, three frequencies, 27, 54, and 81 hertz, agree well with each other. They nearly uh, fall uh, in a common curve. And uh, this uh, shows the hysteresis loss dominates the measured loss. And also, we observed that in the high current region, actually the measured AC loss agree with uh, Norris model. Well, uh, something different happens is in the low current region, the measured AC loss is far, uh, far uh, higher than the Norris model. So this is because of the magnetic substrate and it add, uh, added extra hysteresis loss into the measured uh, AC loss. So in the low current region, the hysteresis loss in uh, magnetic substrate dominate the total loss. Well, with the increase of the uh, current, the magnetic substrate will be saturated. And then the AC loss started to dominate the, uh, to the measured total loss. So it, it explains. And uh, before we go to check the AC loss results of the uh, series connected by fellow coil and uh, uh, parallel connected by, by fellow coil, it will be very interesting to see uh, how the uh, current distribution between inner winding and the uh, outer winding as shown in this figure. So it will be very obvious that in the series connected by fellow coil, the current in inner winding is always equal to the current in the outer winding. Well, in the parallel connected by fellow coil, we observed that uh, the current in the inner winding is all, how say, uh, you can see from this figure, the current flowing in the inner winding is always higher than the current flowing in the outer winding. So the inner winding is indicated by the solid mar uh, marker and the outer winding is uh, represented by the open marker. 
And uh, also we observed that with the, uh, when the frequency increases, so the blue one uh, represents 27 hertz and the green is 81 hertz. So with the increase of frequency, this current, uh, the current in inner winding and the outer winding become more and more uniform. Actually, uh, later uh, we explained this. So this, this is a current distribution formula between uh, these two uh, windings. And uh, 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 we will say with the increase of the frequency, the inductance dominates the impedance of each winding. And uh, finally, the current distribution will be according to this. So actually, with the increase uh, the frequency, finally current distribution will be according to this equation. So finally, this slide shows the AC loss test results uh, measured in a series connected by fellow coil, in a parallel uh, connected by fellow coil, and also uh, in the, how say, we compared the AC losses in these two coils in this figure. So let's see them one by one. In figure A, uh, it's easily, how say, it's obvious that the a measured AC loss under three frequencies has a very good agreement with each other. And also with the increase of the current, AC loss increases accordingly. Uh, now for the in, uh, figure B, we can see at a fixed uh, uh, total current, I mean the total current, uh, we define the total current as the sum up of inner winding and the outer winding. So with the, at a fixed uh, uh, total, total current, AC loss in parallel connected by fellow coil regime decreases with the increase of frequency. So this is mainly due to the current sharing discrepancy. And in figure C, uh, so this is the total, uh, total current is defined as this equation. And so uh, in the, how say, in the series connected by fellow coil, if the current is 100, uh, uh, amps, then the total current will be 200 amps. And then uh, uh, after knowing this, we will see at a fixed uh, tr uh, total transport current, AC loss in the parallel connected by fellow coil is always higher than that measured in a series connected uh, by fellow coil. And also uh, we, we, took, we take a closer look at the results. Then for example, when the total uh, current is equal to around uh, 200 amps, then the AC loss in the series connected by fellow coil is only 8% of the, of the AC loss in the BC, how say, in the parallel connected by fellow coil at 27 hertz. And uh, uh, the AC loss in BCS is only 14% of that in the parallel connected by fellow coil when the frequency goes a little bit higher. So through this AC loss comparison, it mainly demonstrates the series connected by fellow coil regime will give a considerable advantage towards of the AC loss re reduction. So this slide represents uh, presents the quench test result, quench test system, uh, the test rig in our lab. So this. Uh, this test rig was used to characterize the fault current limiting performance of the helical bifella coils. And uh, this is the schematic uh, of the test rig. So uh, I'll say uh, we, we will demonstrate the normal operation. So when the S1 is closed, the S2 is open. And then in order to simulate the fault, S2 will be closed to short circuit the load and uh, uh, in order to remove, to clear the fault, the S2 will be further uh, open to achieve the recovery period as well. And, so th and also this uh, test rig will achieve automatic control of the data acquisition as well. It's a very handy uh, test system. So uh, now in this slide, it shows the fault count limiting test results, uh, how say, by the series connected by fellow coil. And uh, uh, we performed a different prospective fault current. For example, in this scenario, uh, as we can see, so the, uh, in this region, this is a normal period. 
this is a fault period and this is a recovery period. Uh, we, uh, we measured the current uh, and also voltage across the SFCL and also measured the current resistance as well. As we can see in this scenario, the, uh, by the installation of the series connected by failure coil, the prospective fault current uh, of 1217 amps was limited to 36% of it, which is only uh, uh, 436 amps. And also when we increased the, the prospective fault current to around 2223 amps, so it was uh, suppressed to only 22% of it to within uh, less than 500 amps. And we also observed the uh, voltage falls across the fault current limiter immediately when the fault happens. So in this scenario, the voltage is more than um, two volts. And in this scenario, the voltage is, how say, is more than uh, six volts. And also we observed the current resistance and the compare them. So, and also we can see in this scenario, after the fault has been cleared, the fault current limiter can be uh, recovered by itself. But uh, in this case, even we cleared the fault because of the even normal current uh, will, uh, how they will add some energy, the fault current limiter may not easily get recovered. And uh, this slide, uh, this slide shows the fault current limiting test results uh, demonstrated by the parallel connected by Bella coil. Similarly, we run the two uh, prospective fault current level. One is uh, 1200, 1250 amps, and uh, another one is 2280 amps. And also, it shows around uh, a 50% of limitation and also 40% of limitation as well. Very uh, interestingly, because in this scenario, we will observe uh, the voltage for cross in the SFCL after the fault uh, is only around the point, point to uh, volts, which is very tiny. And uh, by further look at the quench resistance value, we will see uh, it's very uh, tiny amount of uh, resistance how they activated by this uh, SFCL. We will say actually at this moment, uh, this uh, parallel connected by failure coil is still in the uh, flux flow mode. We, uh, well, in this scenario, it demonstrates a, a very good uh, fault count limiting uh, performance uh, with this resistance. And, uh, uh, by, and in this slide, we mainly uh, how say plus the current resistance in helical bipolar coil during the fault period versus the total energy absorbed in the helical coil. As uh, we can observe that the current resistance versus the total energy of each helical coil shows a, a nearly linear relation when the in a, in a log log scale when the uh, helical bipolar coil has uh, went into the crunch mode. Uh, well, when the uh, when the fault energy fault, uh, the fault energy is low, actually here we can see the crunch resistance doesn't vary too much in this mode. So uh, we we will say the uh, one scenario we mentioned before actually is exactly in this point is in the transition from flux mode flux flow mode to the uh, normal crunch behavior. So finally, uh, uh, to summarize the research work we have done, so we, main, uh, we mainly characterized uh, uh, two helical bipolar coils. One is series connected and one is parallel connected. And uh, these two helical uh, bipolar coils share the same windings, but only with the change of the terminal connection method. And uh, this, uh, those two bipolar coils uh, both showed a very uh, low inductance. And in AC loss part, uh, we demonstrated the AC loss in series connected bipolar coil measured under three frequencies agree well each other, and uh, but also. Uh, but the AC loss measured in the parallel connected by failure coil is higher than that in the series, uh, series connected by failure coil. 
when the total currency is the same. This is mainly due to the unequal current sharing between those two coils. We also notice that the, um, the AC loss measured in parallel connected by parallel coil is dependent on the frequency as well, and with the loss in, uh, decreasing as the frequency increases. And finally, for the fault current limiting performance, uh, we carried out a series of crunch tests of these two helical bifellow coil, and uh, we demonstrated the fault current lim uh, limiting performance of those two coils from the uh, voltage, from the limited current, from the crunch resistance. Mm, uh, on, so another point is the prospective fault current has been limited effectively by the series connected by fellow coil with uh, the third point is the flux flow mode uh, occurs when the pros, uh, pros, prospective fault current is uh, within around three times of the IC of the coil. Based on the research work we demonstrated, we recently just uh, published the one uh, peer-reviewed uh, uh, article in the uh, in the ITB transactions on transportation electrification journal. It had uh, is now in the early access section at the moment. And uh, thank you. That's my presentation.